In this video, we need to go from a revenue column and a cost of goods sold column, calculate the totals for both, but then we need to calculate gross profit, total revenue minus total cost of goods sold. And then once we get that, compare that to revenue to get gross profit percentage. And we want to see how to do it three ways. We want to see how to do it with a helper column in the original table, with the pivot table analyze calculated field option, and the pivot table data model DAX formula method. Now method number one, we will add an extra helper column here, but let's first build our pivot table. I click in a single cell, go up to Insert Tables, drop down and from table. Or I can use the keyboard Alt N V T, and I want to put this on the existing sheet. I2, click OK. In the pivot table field list, I'll drag boomerang product down to rows. Instantly I get a unique list. Revenue down to values. Cost of goods sold down to values. Because they're number fields, they default to sum. I want number formatting. So in the first calculation, right click, and I want number formatting. Something like number, comma, separator, no decimals, click OK. I'll change the name at the top to indicate the unit. I'll do the same thing for cost of goods sold. Now when we calculate gross profit, we want to take the two aggregated amounts at the product level and subtract them. Well, I'm going to come over to the original table, H column, right click, insert. And I'll add an extra column. We'll call it gross profit. And I'm going to use line, because this will be the gross profit for each line. Enter. This is an Excel table. So it incorporates a new column, equals left arrow to get revenue. Notice the at symbol is the implicit intersection operator saying from that revenue column in the Excel table, please get whatever's in this row, minus, and I'll arrow over to cost of goods sold. When I hit Enter, that formula populates down the column. Now when I come back to the pivot table, I don't see the column, but I right click Refresh, and there it is. Drag it down to Values, and we'll do the same thing. Add some number formatting, and at the top, F2, we'll rename it and indicate the unit. Now the thing is, we can't actually add a helper column for the percentage, because we actually need the aggregated amounts. And this will give us the line amount. So even though example number one, we're going to use this helper column, we actually have to come up to Pivot Table, Analyze, the drop down and the calculation group for fields, items, and sets. And there it is, Calculated Field. This allows us to make a formula at the aggregate level. There's no cell references and things like that here. So in the name, we'll call this gross profit percentage. In the formula bar, we want to take our gross profit line and divide it by revenue. Now this formula will aggregate before it does the division. I want to click Add. I can see it over here. Click OK. Right click, number formatting. We'll do percentage, and I want to see two decimals. Click OK. And if I double click at the top, this opens up the values field setting, and I can change the name here. Now, it won't let me name this field the same as over there, so I'll add an extra. If I click OK, it gives me that warning, but I'll add an extra space to trick it. Click OK. So that's method number one. Now, I've already created the first two calculations using the standard pivot table values area. Pivot table analyze. And the only difference here is we'll create both fields using insert calculated field. So I'll name it gross profit. And here we'll simply take revenue minus cost of goods sold. Add. And then we're going to click up and create a second one, percentage. And down here, I just created that, but I'm going to double click it. Divide by revenue, add, click OK. I want to change the number formatting and rename this. So I'll double click, open up value field setting. Definitely don't want sum. And here's the number formatting option, percent 
show two decimals, click OK. Click OK. We'll rename this, and there's method two. Now, method number three, we want to take this table and bring it into the Power Pivot data model. Now, we can get a table into the data model a few different ways. If you have the Power Pivot ribbon tab, you can use this button. I don't use this button. I bring all of my tables through Power Query first before bringing it into the Power Pivot data model because Power Query has more robust data types and more features. So my rule is I just use Power Query. But I want to show you a trick in case you don't have the right version with the Power Pivot ribbon. If we select this cell and use Alt N V and then T for table, you can check that box right there. And even if you don't have the right version, it'll bring it into the data model. All right, and we'll come back to that idea in a second. But I'm going to use Power Query. So I'll go up to Data, bring it into the Power Query Editor from Table Range. I want to rename this. I'm just going to call it FREV. Check the data types. For example, here I want to change this to Date. It'll ask me, do I want to replace it? I'm going to say Replace Current. And now I close and load, close and load too only create a connection and add this to the data model. You can use this method also if you don't have the Power Pivot ribbon tab. Click OK. Now back on data model, I am going to go over to the data model and build the formulas there, because really that's the best way to, to do it. But in case you don't have Power Pivot, we can verify here it says it's been loaded to the data model. And now we can use an insert the drop down right there. Or Alt N V and D for data model. Click OK. Now, if you do not have the Power Pivot ribbon tab and you can't get back to the measure grid to build your formulas there, you can come to the table and right click. I'm going to show in active over here so it's the only one. Right click, and there it is, Add Measure. This shows up even if you don't have the right version. And then you can type the name, description, add your formula, and add your number formatting. I'm not going to do it that way. Power Pivot, Data Model button to jump over the Data Model. Or in the Data Ribbon tab, there it is in Data Tools. And here is the Power Pivot for Excel window. This is our table. This is the measure grid where we can create measures. Those are formulas we can drag and drop into the pivot table. And the beauty of this is we can, in one location, create the formula, name it, and add number formatting. So the first one will be total revenue. Now notice when I start typing, it jumps me up to the formula bar. And whereas in Excel and Power BI, you use an equal sign when you want to create a formula in Power Pivot, the assignment operator is colon equal sign. And then I'm going to use sum. And in Power Pivot, you can select a column, make sure it has the table name, and then in square brackets, the field name, close parentheses. So you want to add the unit. So that, that'll automatically show up in the pivot table field list and in the report. Hit Enter. Oops. I clicked on Region instead of Revenue. I'm going to double click it and type R, and then down arrow to Revenue, Enter. And right click Format. Let's say Number. Let's say use a separator, zero decimals, click OK. So the beauty of Power Pivot and DAX formulas this will appear in the data model pivot table field list. And we can drag and drop, and it will always have the right name and the right number formatting. Now I'll do the same thing for cost of goods sold. And I'll use the sum function. And this time, I'll click the right column, close parentheses, right click Format. There's our number formatting. Click OK. Now we have two aggregate sum calculations. Now we want to subtract these, so we click below, type the name, colon equal sign, and we use a square bracket to access measures. And I'm going to down arrow, and there's my total revenue tab. Now in DAX formulas, when you refer to a measure, you use the square brackets. When you refer to a column, you use the table and then the field name in square brackets. Minus square bracket, I see it there, tab. 
and Enter, and add some formatting. I added some number formatting. Now we want to divide gross profit on top of total revenue. Gross profit percent, colon, equal sign. And we could just use the division symbol and take those two measures, but there's a great function called divide. The numerator, and we can click to insert a measure, comma, the denominator, total revenue. And if we want, comma, alternative results when there's a divide by zero error, we can put something here. Or if we omit that argument, DAX uses the blank function. Close parentheses and Enter. Right click, Format. And we have to go to Number because I don't see Percentage. And then over here, drop down for Percentage. And two decimals is fine. Click OK. And there we have our measures. The names, the formulas, and the number formatting are all completed. Now I'm going to Control S. And you can jump back over to Excel by clicking that button or Alt Tab. Now, there are our measures with that awesome f of x icon. Let's drag Boomerang products down to rows, total revenue down to values. And look at that, number formatting and the correct name. I can drag. And in fact, I can just check, and they'll go right to the values area. And there it is using DAX formulas. All right, so in this video, we saw how to do a gross profit percentage calculation using DAX formulas. Over here, we saw how to do it with two calculated fields. And we started it off with a helper column and one calculated field. In the comments below, tell me which one do you like or which one do you use? All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out an epic video that covers everything about Power Pivot, check out this video.